Did you know that Tom Hanks campaigned for the role of Mario in the critically panned 1993 film Super Mario Brothers? At the time, Nintendo and X worried he wouldn't have enough box office clout to carry the film. You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the XboxHub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode number. 53. My name's Gareth Bright. I'm going to be your host. And on my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How are you doing, James? I'm not too bad, thank you. Good. How are you? I was worried for a moment. I thought you had gone. There's a slight pause. I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure. I was tempted to. I'm staying. <laughs> just, look at the, just look at the door. <laughs> trying to get out. <laughs> and on my virtual right is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? Hi, I am definitely staying. Oh, Don't worry. I'm, like I'm not looking for the door just yet. Good. How are you doing? Yeah, you're hey. time. Give it time. How you doing, you do? <laughs> all right? Yeah? Happy? Yeah, 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 yeah all yeah. good. It's How a you? strange time, isn't it? Because we're in... Um, now, at this date, we've got... In the UK, if you're listening around the world, um, we're in a tier system on the COVID thing. So we're on tier one, which is where we some of us are. And then there's tier two. And then there's tier three. And tier three is like a, almost like a lockdown, except for shops. Yeah. Um I'm in London, and I've just been moved up to Tier 2 today. Uh, Richard, where are you? Welcome to Tier 2. You're in Tier 2. I'm in Tier 2, yeah. And James, what about you? I'm at high. (gasps) You're in Tier 3? No, that's very high. Oh, Oh, so you're in Tier 2 with us? Yeah. It's just a different system we use. Okay. (laughs) Uh, The colour system as well. It's red, dark red. And slightly darker red. And we're in dark red. Is this in your house? Or is it just generally? No, that, that, that's how it is. <laughs> all right, good. It's all the systems. Good. The, the people over that side of the Pennines responded better to colour than actual words I'd heard. So. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I can't deny it. I was wondering, if we get um, when we go up to Tier 3, do we get any extra experience or any loot? <laughs> Uh, like Destiny. I'm hearing, I'm hearing word that we might go into what is supposed to be tier three. Oh. So I'll let you know. Let me know. Oh, God. Yeah. Wow. Probably get a bit of experience. Yeah, a bit some extra gear. <laughs> I heard yeah. it was a debuff for minus 20% <laughs> to uh, infection resistance. <laughs> yes. I won't mind a new costume. Yes. That'd be <laughs> good. pajamas for weeks. <laughs> Pre- pre-orders only, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, dear. We have to laugh. Oh, we're crying. We we're crying. Um, again. Yeah, again. <laughs> Richard, what have you been doing this week? Uh, something that I'd mentioned before on the podcast. So uh, before I'd, I would mention that I'd, I was watching through Twin Peaks, and I think at that point I was halfway through the second series, or I might have been through the third series. Either way, that um, I've now finished Twin Peaks, the, the, full, the full thing, including the return. And... I'm still still processing it after that, but wow, what what an amazing TV show that is! And the return is the most recent one, isn't it? Yeah, I think that yeah. one's a few years old now. Yeah, uh, I didn't have Sky Atlantic to watch it over here though, so I was watching it on on Blu-ray. And I kind of just want to sit sit back and watch it all again. <laughs> It is amazing, isn't it? It's unlike yes. anything else. Did oh, you... absolutely. There's not there's not going to be anything like it either. Did you both watch the uh, short film on Netflix with the monkey and David Lynch? No, yeah. I forgot all about no. that. Let me go back to that. Short film with the monkey, David Lynch. Everyone watch that. No, it's extraordinary, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that a short monkey? <laughs> yes. Well, he's short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, James, have you, have you have you been tempted on Twin Peaks? I I started watching it when it first aired. You know the new series. 
Yeah. Uh, on Sky Is it a couple of years ago now? Yeah. Um, Tony for episodes. It was just weird <laughs> because I didn't see the first series or the first two series. Um, I didn't really get it. No. I didn't get the hype. Um, it was different and very um out there. I don't think you'll get it if you watch the first two series. It, no, would, get, it would get you into a rhythm. <laughs> yeah, I had no oh, attachment, you see, yeah. to any of the, well, to the main character. Yeah. I didn't like him, didn't hate him, didn't even know who he was. Yeah. Because I remember him from um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, he was in that for a while. Yeah. Oh, he was a crazy yeah. scientist. Right. Um, and so, uh, Desperate Housewives, I remember him from yeah. that as well. Showgirls. I, I, I didn't see that one. <laughs> well, I'll take your word that he was in it. Carl McClacken. Because of Carl McClacken? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... It's a, it's a, it's great. I mean, it's so it's so great that David Lynch is making stuff. But I don't know if it's got another series, has it? I, I think this could be it. Uh, I hope that there would be, but yeah. It might have Netflix might have got it. You never know. If they did his short with the monkey, we'll see. <laughs> well, no, if it's not, if it's not got him it. involved, though, that, there's absolutely no point in watching it. It's definitely yeah. yeah. It's, it's his thing. And, yeah, and yeah. The beauty of the third series was that he directed every single episode and had complete com- creative control over it, which made it bizarre and abstract, but at the same time, utterly compelling. It's a great thing when he does cooking. He did this a while ago, cooking on, like, for YouTube. And it's just him cooking pasta. But I remember it, you know, it was all sort of in black and white. <laughs> and it was just amazing. It wasn't doing anything mad, but it just was weird. It's just like really compelling and strange, cooking pasta for a while and sort of talking about it. Yeah, I think he does um, a daily yeah. weather forecast as well on YouTube because I get I get um, obviously having searched stream afterwards my Google news feed. There's, there's these videos that pop up and it just says weather forecast for a certain day and then it's it's a picture of him. So I don't know whether he's doing <laughs> daily forecasts of the weather as well. Oh, I hope so. Oh, wow. It's bizarre. It's good. Um, <laughs> James, what have you been doing? Um, well, I watched a film at the weekend. <laughs> wow. Uh, starring Vin Diesel. <laughs> the <laughs> mega star in the Fast and the Furious films. Yeah. Um, it was Bloodshot. And it's based on a Valiant Comics character. I don't even heard of the character. No. Nope. No, me neither. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go. It's a comic, like superhero kind of film. Yeah. Um, and he stars as a, a US Marine and basically gets killed and then brought back to life using silence. Um, and it's very strange because it's quite technical because he gets resurrected using nanites. Um, and now he's super strong, he can heal himself, um, he's basically unstoppable. Um, so he goes on a mission to kill whoever killed him. Um, but it's probably the, the worst acting <laughs> I've ever seen in a film. <laughs> in an action film. And I've seen Sylvester Sloan, I've seen John claude Van Damme films, this is the worst. <laughs> it's like you can't bother it. To be fair, when you set when you set the plot line up, I wasn't expecting that much. Oh, well, Guy Pierce is in it. Oh, um, really? And I thought between him and Vin Diesel, there'd be a bit of better acting going on. Yeah. Because they are quite, you know, veterans of the, of the movie screen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just one action scene and a little bit of story that they couldn't wait to move on from. And then another action scene. <laughs> but the action scenes are really good. Um, yeah. It just takes bullets to the face, explosions to the chest. It's absolutely invincible. <laughs> and it's a great character, but they absolutely murdered it Yeah, as a film. 
I couldn't watch it again. What would you um, give? It? What would you give it out of five? Two and a half. Fifty percent. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's a shame because it came out right in the start of lockdown, so it didn't really do very well at the cinema. Um, but it wouldn't have done well anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a blessing. We've we, we've got a friend of ours, and we won't mention his name. He doesn't listen to us anymore. Um, and he would only he only watches films that are around about sixty seven percent on IMBD because <laughs> he says you won't get disappointed. It's, it won't be too arty or too classic, but six or seven percent is where it's a good mark for him. A mediocre film. A mediocre film. It's he looks for So that might be his. Maybe that's a bit too low under his six or seven percent. I think if it was in three D uh, it'd uh, it'd be worth watching. Yeah, okay. It'd be quite cool actually. Mm. In three D. It won't be. I'd give it a three and a half. Oh my word. If it was <laughs> Oh my word. <laughs> um but yeah, terrible acting. Bloodshot, good. I've been talking about terrible. No, um, I've been watching the Haunting of Bly Manor, which is on Netflix, and it's done by the team who did another um, Netflix series about a year and a half ago called The Haunting or something else. Um, Hill House. Hill House. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. And it's basically it's the same team and the same some of the same actors. So it almost like works like a repertory actors. Like um, what's the other one that does that? The um, the very camp horror films, American Horror. They do the same kind of like have the same rep. Yeah, they have the same repertory of, and they do so. And this takes a P.D. James story, I think, The Haunted Blind Mar- Mar- Manor, set in England, and it's like a nine part series. And uh, what I really loved the first series. I really loved Hill House. Did you both see that? Any? I know you wouldn't done James because you're terrified of things. Of I've never heard of it. Yeah, Richard, did you watch it? I didn't know. No. And the first one was very good, and they do ghosts really, really well. They do the effects; it's generally scary. And this is this this is really good. I've got two episodes left. It when they do the ghost stuff, it's great. When they do the sort of like talky emotional stuff, it's not so great. And I think the problem I've got with it is it's set in England, and it's. American actors doing English accents and actually a lot of them are doing really really well but it's like I think with Americans when they know we're doing American accents to us it sounds fine we're doing it quite well but to a lot of Americans when they hear us doing American accents or our actors doing they go oh my god they can really hear it it's very labor <laughs> and it's the same with this a little bit it's not I'm not it's not Dick Van Dyke at all and if they do it really really well um, but you can you know you know you can see and you can hear it a bit and it doesn't doesn't help it sometimes. Um, but there's a guy in it, the American guy does a Scottish accent, it's really good. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't, something not quite right about it. But when they did the ghost stuff, it's brilliant. It's jump it up. But I, I didn't know that this was set in England. So when I, I remember watching the trailer for it, and it's got the the girl, Victoria Pedretti, she, she was in You. That I watched at the start. Oh, yeah, of this year. yeah, yeah. And I remember watching the trailer. I was like, "Why has she got this weird accent?" But I, I didn't know until you just pointed out that it, it is set in England. Yeah. So I guess that makes sense now. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. It's good. I'm enjoying it. And it does when they do. When they do, there's one episode they do brilliantly. It's fantastic. They sort of play with this idea that ghosts are sort of just lost, really, because they keep remembering things. They don't know whether they're ghosts or not. So they're just flicking between memories. And I really, that's really nice. It's really nicely done. They do a whole episode based on that. So yeah, it's great. Give that a go. It's How enjoyable. Long each episode? Some of them are about an hour. Mm. Yeah, it's too long for you. Long. Yeah. <laughs> you can't watch it. You'd be terrified. Um, yeah. I yeah. You convinced me not to. Yeah. I was it's just good. about to as well. But, <laughs> but watch the first yeah. series if you haven't watched it before. That's what I say to him. Watch The Haunted of Hill House. Um, and the it's other scary. thing, I think so. I think it is scarier, actually. <gasps> Much scarier the first one. Yeah, than the second one. Um, now, the other thing I've been just before this, before we go into the news this week, I, I don't know about you two. I, I think I was talking to James about this off the podcast, and I was saying to him, the schedule coming up now for games is mad. I sort of had to look at it all 
you know, with us with the podcast and say, okay, what have we got coming up? And the reason, I know we've talked about this before, but it's the money situation. If you're like me, I kind of want most of these games, but get, it's going to get quite pricey at the moment, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Which, you know, you're talking up to the end of this month, you're talking, you're going into Watch Dogs, as well as these new consoles, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to get the money for yet. Um, you don't need. <laughs> I don't need. And then it's kind of like um, Assassins, then we've got Cyberpunk, then we've got, um, there's a Call of Duty games in there. Then even in December, now you've got, um, got a, What's the God of Monsters thing? Image Rising. Yeah, and you've got the Medium. Now it's been re- we've got a release date for that, which is in December the tenth or something, round about that time. Probably got that wrong. Football Manager on the consoles. Mm. Oh yeah. As well as all the other extra little bits I've forgotten there. Probably Call of Duty, and then all the other little indie games and everything else. Dirt's in there. Dirt Five. And aren't all the big games seventy quid now as well? Yes. That's a lot of money. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. Though. I've only seen seventy quid batted around for PlayStation games. So Demon Souls was seventy quid. Right. I think the next gen upgrade for uh, NBA might be seventy quid as well. Yeah, so sixty seventy quid. 70. That, but I think the Ubisoft games are sticking at fifty. Oh, are they? No, I think so. The um, Tetris game that's coming to launch for the Xbox One. Seventy. That's 35. I didn't expect that to be 35. I think about 15 quid. <laughs> yeah. 20 at the most. Yeah. Um, and Yakuza, which we'll talk about in a bit, I think with Richard. But it's, it's you know, you've got some, there's a lot of stuff coming, isn't there? And mm. I don't know about you two. Do you think anything you can see out of that might get left behind a little bit in that busy schedule? Phoenix Rising. Whatever it's going on. So that's it's the one I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I'm looking for. I think that's going to. I think that's going to do all right because it's in December. Yeah, I think that'd be quite could be quite surprising. For for me personally, I'm quite happy to sack off cyber, Cyberpunk for a little bit. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, yeah, I'm more interested in, in, in Watch Dogs and obviously Yakuza. Yeah, yeah. And they're big games, aren't they, to play? They big. Will be, yeah, they're, yeah, they're so. both big games. Yeah. And I've got Assassins as well on top of that, as well as Watch Dogs in my head. So it's like, yeah, I know what you mean. But the beauty of that side of you can do that because it's a single player, isn't it? So single not, player, yeah. that's, what, that's what I'm thinking about, yeah. yeah. But I think that conversation is really interesting because I think that will happen with quite a few people. Because, you know, like we said, these are big games. They're not like games you can go, oh, I'm going to finish that in a week and trade it in. Mm-hmm. It's games that are going to last you quite a while, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Watch Dogs probably into the 50 to 80 hour Assassin's the same, Cyberpunk the same. And, yeah, it's going to be, I think, it'd be interesting to see what might, I mean, there's loads of other games we haven't mentioned that are coming out in that time. What might, what might suffer a little bit? Especially where yeah. we are. Like you'd said before, the, the, the um, with with lockdown and everything, that was the time to release your indie games. Mm. But, but these next couple of months, I, if I was an indie developer, I would, I wouldn't even risk it. No, 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 definitely not. Okay, we need to raid our bank accounts, look under the sofa, see if we can afford Tetris. <laughs> I just play the old games. Oh yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, uh, in Game Pass and Games with Gold and all the rest. Yeah. I enjoy them in 30 frames per second. Yeah, exactly. We start getting red and lighting. Yes, exactly. Um, should we talk? Should we talk about some of the news we've seen this week? Um, we had um, for the new consoles, PlayStation and... Play, let's talk about PlayStation's uh, UI first of all. Got announced today, didn't it? Did you ever look at that? You two had a had a brief look. There was some interesting things that um, they'd come out and said as well about um, they were providing guides. Did each each there was something about these cards and activities 
um, where people could search for a guide on how to do certain things. Yes. But there was the whole... Like achievements. A little bit, yeah. But I think there was a bit of confusion around what was going on because they didn't know whether this was something that a developer would have to input themselves so they could open up like a dashboard for the games, I believe. And, and if they were wanting to do a certain challenge, they could jump right into that point on a game. Mm. But they weren't sure who was going to be programming that side of it, I don't think. Or, or at least us, us as the, the consumer weren't sure who that would be. See, I thought the PS5 activities part of it is that if you had a game, and I think they were using Sat Boy as an example, yeah. you could just pick a, you could instantly pick an area to go into. So mm-hmm. maybe Sat Boy is not a good idea. So if it was dirt, for example, I could look at it, these activities and then go, I want to go to the racetrack. Yeah, in yeah, or I want to look at a, a racetrack in Japan. I'm going to play that now. And I instantly press that and I go into that mode. Rather than going through yeah. menus and going through picking the thing. Is that? That's what I, I thought. Think I think it worked for that. certain things. Like yeah. a quick race or... Yes. And obviously the link to trophies or things like that. You can do it straight in. Um, I don't know if it'll work now for every game. Well, I think or Richard was right. I think the game. developers have got to go into it, have got to commit to it. Yeah. Well, they? I think it's like the... Yeah. Xbox achievements where some track progression and some don't. It depends on the developer. Yeah. If they want to implement that system, yeah. they will. But I can't yeah. imagine developers making videos with solutions for, for the games every time. On top of everything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do like the idea you could do picture in picture. Yeah. Well, that's the Xbox the Snap feature, isn't it? Yeah, which is one of my favourites. <laughs> I, I miss that as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that as well. Yeah. You can snap Netflix in. Yeah. Or threes. That little game. Got, uh, yeah, we could play that. Yeah. Um, yeah. When the... Did the... Because the Xbox has changed their UI thing this week, haven't they? I've looked at my Xbox and it's different. Is... Is this what we're going to get for the Series X with what we're seeing now on the Xbox? I think so, yeah. So they're adding themes, are they? Yes. And the way Which... it's set up at the moment is how it's going to look. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Because okay. PlayStation have just removed themes. Xbox have added themes. Xbox has removed Snap feature and PlayStation has just added it. <laughs> in. That's what someone pointed out on Twitter earlier. <laughs> Good. Great. There you go. Um, the other bits of information, let's do an Xbox bit of um, extra bit and then we'll go to the PlayStation one, is today there was a big thing about it because there's been rumours that the Xbox is going to blow up. It's too... <laughs> it's too... Um, it's going to overheat. That's what people will be saying. So <laughs> someone's... Because everyone's had the Xbox Series. A lot of people have had the Xbox Series X for about three weeks now. Um, important people, not us. Um, of happy self, <laughs> that's what James have it, <laughs> and uh, just refused to switch it on. Just looked at yeah. it. I'm uh, waiting for something to burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for Tetris. Okay. Um, and they've done a temperature uh, check on it, and you'd be pleased to know it's much colder than the Xbox One X at the moment. Panic over. Panic over. Yeah, I think got COVID. See, it's not a fever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it's fine. It's not going to blow up. That was the other thing. And the other bit of news about the PlayStation Five, which was quite interesting, was the um, idea that you can record voice chats. And the idea is, if you with having a voice chat with someone and they're abusive to you, or they're abusive about race or sex, you can instantly report them to moderators. What do we think about this? Yeah, yeah, I think anything like that 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 is allowing people to to report the negativity, I think, is good. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it works and it and it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. But it seems to be a positive step. 
Yeah. I mean, it could be abused. <laughs> yeah. Quite a lot. Right. Um, In what way, James? I can see people being abusive and then maybe recording it afterwards when they get a response. You know what I mean? You could just report one side of it. Right. Or setting up the friends. I mean, if, if we recorded some of our party chats, we so much trouble. We swear words. Yeah. You know, yeah, where, so. where do you draw the line? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when the Xbox 360 first came out. And do you remember they used to be, you could report people for all sorts of things. Could you like... <laughs> What was it like? Bad gamemanship or stuff like that? Do you remember? Yeah. That? And I remember yeah, I, I I played Project Gotham Racing right, yeah. online when I played it, and I think because I'm not very good at those games, and I think I went around a corner, and I knocked into a player like you do. You know, some people do that for fun. I got bad. I was like I was like nearly banned. Report. Do you know, do you know what, Gareth? Yeah. The exact same thing happened to me on Project Gotham. Really. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. I think people were trying to treat it as a as a simulator, racing simulator, more than uh, anything. So any any badge, you know, using using the corners to your advantage was a definite no no. And I got plenty of bad rep for that. Did you? Yeah. Wow. I got loads of bad rep from Grid. Did you? Used to drive around wrecking cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I deserved it, but I mean, it's still. But it's sweet, you know. Yeah. Seeing my rating go down. Yeah. But that went, didn't it? That rating too. That's not there anymore. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it wasn't really accurate. No. Um, but I... For anyone. But this could be... You're right. This could be a really good thing, couldn't it? Um, yeah. And uh, just how they kind of work that out. But I'm sure they're on that. Um, I think more stuff to kind of like... To shut that stuff down. You know, we talk about it on FIFA. The problem we've got FIFA is... For years, we've just seen names of clubs, which we talked about, which are horrific. Yeah. Or names of players that people put in. It needs to be. How many times do we get invited to party chat? Mm. Now we could join them and then record whatever they say and get them reported. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's got people doing that harassment with strangers like most of them do. Yeah. I think you'd need a team of people to review every single submission. If you yeah. were going to do it properly, which is obviously a lot of time and effort, because you could set you could set it up so that there'll be a computer that reviews them, and it picks up any bad language. But like you say, if, if you're just playing online and you and you're not doing particularly well, like like I tend to do, and you just start not swearing at anyone, but you're just frustrated at your own ineptitude. Mm, exactly. Mm. Smashing the house up. <laughs> Hearing that in the background. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the controllers through the window. Yeah, <laughs> um, good. Right, um, Richard, I think you're the man to talk. Talk us through Yakuza. What have you learnt about that? No, this is the new Yakuza game, isn't it? Yes, there's been a lot of um, previews gone out this week for for those fortunate to have a um, an Xbox Series S X and S. Um, they've been able to play a little section of Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, but I was... I'd, I'd seen seen a, an article about the different um, resolution options uh, that you could have for, for this for this new game. Because it's on... So you, Yakuza Like a Dragon's on the Dragon Engine, which was used for Kuwami 2 and Yakuza 6. But this, with it being sort of in between generations, rather than specifically designed for for the new generations mm. of consoles, um, they've they've put in a few options um, to how you can play it. So I think one of the options is just slightly above 1080p, but at 60 frames a second. I think that's the the normal mode of way of playing it. Um, but if anyone's then got a 4K TV, you can have it at 4K, but it only puts out at 30 frames a second. Okay. So I'm just I'm just sort of seeing this. Um, so yeah, Series X is at 1440p, and that that does 60 frames a second, and then 4K at 30 frames per second. But it's it's like what we said originally with with the Xbox. Series X when it first got announced, it was sort of looked like this this tower PC thing. 
Um, and I think by giving different resolution options, I think a lot of developers are seeing it that way because that's that's something from from my point of view that I've only really seen recently mm. um, on on PC games, depending on how how much power the the, the PC can put out. Now, what would you choose, Richard? Because you're this is the thing. What would you choose out of those two options? Um, I because well, this is the thing now because I've I've bought a, I bought a four K TV last year in preparation for this this new console generation. Right, but I'd I'd kind of like it at sixty frames a second. Would so you? I wouldn't be getting four K content, but we'll see. We'll see. I'd obviously try both and see which which I preferred. It's a pretty looking game. You want, it, you want it to? I mean, that's a pretty, that's a really good engine anyway. But you want to see that at its best, don't you? It's hard. See, I, I can't. But like having painting. the option. Sorry, say it, James. What did you say? I don't know if we'd probably change the option from whatever it starts with. No, I think it started in normal with, you know, I think fourteen, fourteen forty. Yeah. In normal mode, I think I'd i just go with that. Rather than going to settings, changing it. And then going, Oh, I wonder if it's better than normal one. I'll just stick with the normal. Yeah, because no, I, I know that the these cities are are busy. There's a lot going on in them as well. Yeah. And I noticed when I when I played Kiwami two on my bog standard Xbox one there were times it, it did occasionally suffer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Right. So, okay. Um, I'm looking. It looks good. That game looks interesting. Looks mad. I see it's turn based as well. In the attack. Yes, it's a full full RPG now. It's gone from a, a a sort of like beat 'em up type of battle system to a turn based RPG now. Is that the first one to do that? Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Turn used to the brawling. It's not going to happen every two minutes, though, is it? You're going to go into a turn-based battle, like you do in the brawls in the city. <laughs> yeah, I think they'd have to be, turn that down. Yeah, so that'd slight. be a bit mad, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm. But, I, I mean, the game, I, what I really love about that game is just walking about the city. Yeah. That's a brilliant, brilliant city to just yeah. explore. Is it on Game Pass? Not this one. Oh. The, the other three yeah. are. Oh, damn. Okay. What is coming on I mean, Game Pass for the Xbox Series X in the first month? That's a good question, isn't it? We should have maybe done some research about this. Oh, I'm Halo happy. Infinite. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> is the medium um, on Game Pass? No. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think so. No, maybe not. Yeah. Wow. We should find that out. We'll find that out from nearer the time. We'll find out while you're talking. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, guys. Um, while you're talking, let's. Um, should we have a little chat about? Do you want to say anything else about that, Richard? Yakuza. No, no, I've, no? I've got my Yakuza slot in for this time, good. so I'm good. Thank you. Um, I had a quick look at some of the Assassin's Creed previews that have been going on. So some people have had like a four hours of their game. Have you had a chance of a look at those, you two? No. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Sorry, yeah, sorry, you're yeah. Yeah. We're on an internet <laughs> hole. Yeah. And you won't see me again now. Yeah. Um Assassins, I had a I had a, I had a quick look. Yeah. Um I mean one thing about this game, for me I'm really excited about this. This is gonna be my Xbox Series X day one game. And I think what from the previous what people have been saying, this little, this is the second time they've had a two year gap. And when we had the last time, it was a complete relook, relaunch of the RPG. Um, this one, what people have been saying, what's kind of interesting about it is when you normally do something like Assassin's, you normally end up with loads of um, side quests when you um, play Assassin's. So you have hundreds of like little arrows on people's head that you'll you'll have a so I, when I played Assassin, I've just got this whole list of stuff that I need to do, mm. <laughs> and it is just like. Oh God! How am I going to get all this done before I do a main mission? And I think they've done something here. Is instead of just like these arrows on people, they're called world events that you can you're just happen upon. 
um, as you're traveling around the assassins and they each might have a marker that might say there's loot here like a little thing that goes there or it might be uh, um, there's something there's a mythical creature or a boss battle you might have but it's a bit more it's a bit more things that you happen upon rather than you're kind of going you need to go and see this person over here go who's got a thing on their head go from A to B that still is in that structure but it's a lot more um, has a lot more kind of that RPG and exploration about finding the world does that make sense? yes this yeah. is me looking at what other people have written really and that kind of excites me and they said they spent a lot more time on the main story because my only sort of criticism of the Assassin's Creed is because you go off and do so many side quests you sort of forget what the main story is after all sometimes I, I've done it and between the two main story missions there's been like 20 hours of me drifting around and then you go back and someone goes and someone starts speaking and you go, who the hell are you again? Where am I? Yeah. Why have I done this? And sometimes the side stories are more interesting. Yeah. And then, the little contained stories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially in Unity. In Unity yeah. there's also little good stories. Yeah. No, you're absolutely really, right. Uh, the theatre and that. Yeah. Um, but it does look good. It looks really, I'm really excited about it. I mean, there's loads of, have a look at what people are writing about in some of the previews and it's each have focused on kind of main missions and sort of boss battles. It just looks really good fun as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it's the idea of doing the sort of like main war type stuff mixed with the mythical stuff, which is great. And it just looks stunning. Yeah. Really exciting. Excited you two? Are you going to be playing it, Richard? You're going to be playing it, aren't you, Richard? Yeah, I, I played, um, as we discussed before, I played Origins as for the first time this yeah. year after I'd seen the release trailer for Valhalla. And I was really impressed by that. But again, it's 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 sort of like I can I can wait a while with this one, I think, with with what else I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah. But it does look it does look absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um Let's just talk about one more bit of news. We've got to move on. We've got so much to do. Um, what was interesting today? There's are you are you a Dexter fan? Have you watched Dexter, Richard? Not fully. No, I, no. I drifted off after the third series. <laughs> there you go. Um, and James, you've watched Dexter, haven't you? I love Dexter. I stuck with it all the way to the end, even when it was terrible. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's not a video game of Dexter, but that would be good, wouldn't it? That'd be a very good video game. Um, is that Hitman? Oh, it is Hitman, right? Yeah, basically, <laughs> is. Um, there's a. Um, they're going to do a little limited series um, with the actor, and they're going to do it with the co creator, I think, isn't it? Who, did the, who was involved in the first four series of Dexter, the good ones. Yeah, when it was decent. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> they're going to finish that story off, which is going to be quite exciting. That's going to come in 2021. I hope it's just Dexter literally living the life of a lumberjack. <laughs> he doesn't kill anyone. He's got a new life. It's just a nice drama. Yes. <laughs> that's that's the plot to the latest Terminator film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I didn't mind that Terminator film. I enjoyed that. No, I quite enjoyed yeah. it. I was disappointed that it didn't do well. Yeah, I, it was I thought it was one of the best. Yeah, I did. I was, I was sort of like, I kind of watched it and I thought, Oh, this is gonna be. This is like had two star reviews. You know, oh, this is, this would be alright. I'm, I'm really into it. Yeah, right? same. Yeah. Um, right, we're gonna have to move on. Can Sorry, I, quick narration. Yeah. Uh, Tetris effect. It's coming to Game Pass. Oh. Definitely. And Dragon Quest Eleven. Oh, brilliant. So I mean, there's two. Well, at least one decent game now. <laughs> we won't say which one. <laughs> no, you can decide, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, good. Is that the only two games coming in November? Yeah, 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 fine, quickly. Okay, brilliant. Well done. Um, let's talk about. We're going to go into the games we've been playing for the final bit. Um, and one of the games that we all three of us have played uh, this week because uh, we kind of got some codes uh, from Big Blue Bubble, the developers, and it's a game called Forgone. Um, who wants to describe it? Perfectly, you know, good pitch. Uh, I'm going I'm to do it justice. I'll, I'll go for Richard on this. Richard, how would you describe <laughs> Forgone? <laughs> Forgone is a 2D side scroller, mm. almost hack and slash 
action adventure title. And um, for anyone that's ever played Dead Cells, it really reminded me of that in the initial trailer, and and sort of the gameplay is quite similar. So you'll 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 go through an area, killing enemies, um, and then you'll reach almost is almost like a Soulsborne game. You'll reach a uh, a teleport machine. You can either go back to a, a safe haven, or you can you can press on. Uh, there's lots of loot. There's tons of loot in Forgone. Um, most enemies that I seem to be killing were dropping something. N- not all of it good, but in your safe haven, you can go back and salvage things and get more money to then upgrade what you do like. Um, and they drop, I can't remember what they're called. I don't know if they have a name, actually, if anyone remembers. The the blue things that you use to upgrade oh, your skills. Called, yeah. and I don't think they ever have a name, do they? Um, there's a review on our site at the moment by uh, David Osborne, and he's probably more detailed about stuff like that than we are. Well, let's put a lot of pressure on it. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> but you, you can read that there. Um, I can't remember they're called. No, blue things. I think blue things are good. Let's call them blue things. Blue coins. Let's blue call coins, them blue yeah. coins. Yeah, blue and yellow coins. Great. <laughs> yeah, and these get you to upgrade. So you can upgrade. Um, and you can upgrade your kind of skill tree, can't you? Is that right? And yep. your um, abilities. abilities. And like you said, you've got gear and weapons that you can... Yeah. What are the abilities? What abilities do you get? The, the abilities are quite cool. Because hmm. you've got one that makes you dash into oh, yeah. the enemies and causes quite a bit of damage. That's good when you get a little bit surrounded. Um, there's a supernova. I think it's just called Nova now. When you explode everyone mm. on the screen, or at least do some damage to them, um, you can heal yourself, which you definitely need. I mean, the amount of times I've been saved by the the health ability, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> um, what was this? There was there was one that I got, which was they didn't fit into one of you. So you, you have two slots for abilities on your left and right triggers. But I got one that was almost like a dash feature where you jump up and then you can travel across large spaces. Oh, the air dash. Yes, air, air dash. dash, that's the one, yeah. yeah. yeah that was Which came in, came in useful. And yeah. what's quite... What you do is, like you said with the Dead Souls things, you will die quite a lot, won't you? But A lot. A lot. But the good news is you kind of go back to a base, teleport back to the space, you can sort of upgrade a little bit or do that. But it has that dark thing that when you've opened a door in a level, when you go back and repeat again, those some of those doors ways will be open. Yeah. Shortcuts, which is handy. Um, yeah, especially when you die a few times. <laughs> yeah. You I, get there quickly, don't you? I don't know. I didn't mind this one. I normally get really annoyed by those kind of like, like road games when it starts again. But this, I didn't mind the dying here. I think it's because... The areas aren't massive, are they? Yeah. And you're not having to fight your way too, through too much. No, to I think that helps me in the, with it being 2D as well. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. Mm. There's something about the, that whole thing about, you know, as I'm, we've explained before, I'm much older than you two, but when it comes down to when we used to play games back in the day, it was no saves, you were just playing all the way through till you finished it, some of the games. You had to do it in one setting, which was horrendous. I'm not <laughs> going to lie to you. It was horrible. Yeah. And so whenever I go back to those games, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this ever again. But I do like kind of games that reward you with things like shortcuts or like you're going back and you're going, okay, I'm going to do this a bit better this time. And yeah. you still got some of that kind of like getting better, which you used to have a lot. You know, you had to kind of memorize what you were going to do. And uh, with with the abilities and everything else, it makes it kind of interesting to try different ways of your loadouts as well. And you always feel like you're improving. Hmm. Even just a tiny yeah. bit. You see, you upgrade your weapons. Um, and even changing the weapons can help. Yeah, yeah. Because some yeah. of the weapons are quite slow. Yeah. Powerful. Like the long swords. Yeah. Um, you got daggers. They're much rare than daggers for me. Right, I get in there. Was... Sorry, no. Go on. 
No, I was just, just going to say, I thought it was quite interesting that um, just thinking about it now, that you never actually level up. Your stats are only are purely on upgrading abilities and your equipment. Yeah. There's and no XP or equipment. anything like that. No. No, no. And you've got a grid as well. Or a bow. Rich, yeah, know. and sometimes you've got you've got a gun and a weapon, but sometimes I I got at one point a gun sword. Yeah, that was combined. That was really gun cool. Yeah, gun <laughs> that was great. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, um, um, let's just talk about the art style a little bit, you know, because that's that's what some people will love and some people will go. Mm. Um, it what well, it has a kind of that pixel art feel to it, but it. I would describe it as using it as an influence of that kind of pixel art, like maybe like games like Another World or like you said Dead Cells. Um, And but it does what it does do. It does it really beautifully, and it it does a brilliant way of using backdrops and backgrounds to to some kind of great effect. So it feels like a a modern pixel game for me, and I really like that style. James, what did you think? You you weren't so enthused. At first, I wasn't convinced, but the more I took notice of the environments mm. and the lighting, mm. I know I keep mentioning lighting, but it's really noticeable when you're using pixel art. Yeah, it, yeah. It looks so good. I mean, I think the further you get into it, the more vibrant some of the areas are as well, and the enemies. So it looks better, um, like the big bird. You know, the big uh, bird boss. Mm. Project Hera. That looks so pretty. Yeah. In picture. Just and doesn't I'm, get I'm much panicked. chance to appreciate it. <laughs> no. Exactly. Well, you can do, but you just get killed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm not a fan of picture art in the slightest. But what they've done here, they've, they've put it down a good job of making it detailed as much as they can, mm. given what they've got. Um, yeah, no, it, it was good. Richard, Richard what did you think? Impressed. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that first the the, the lady playing as, she's, she's the first arbiter to give mm-hmm. a bit of law, but I don't think we get her name. Um, she's almost done in the 3D pixel art way as well. So when she's she's turning round and, and jumping up in the air, you can you can notice that she's she is in almost a three D style, mm-hmm. which is in, in a bit of contrast to the the rest of it, which is all two D. But it, the the backgrounds. So there's one part where you're running through an old sawmill sort of thing, but then there's lots of waterfalls mm. in the outside bits. It's I think it's a really really pretty game. Yeah. And the work that they've done on the pixel art is is excellent. And so it was out on Tuesday, I think, was it? This week, so that would Certainly be right. the thirteenth, or is that right? Yeah, thirteenth. Thirteenth, yeah. and we reviewed it on the site. I've done a let's play of it on our YouTube channel. You can check that out. Me being very bad at it. And we, but David, our reviewer, I think he's reviewed it. It's out, and I think he's given it a four point five. Um, but please have a check that out and have a good read. Can I just add one little note? Yeah, before please. Before we finish. Yeah. Um, in terms of accessibility in the game, I was quite impressed that they've allowed the buttons to be remapped to different um, buttons. So rather than triggers, you could use bumpers or you could use the face buttons. Uh, I think that's quite important. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. A lot of games miss that. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, so, good game. Good game. So um, give it a look, Foregone. Um, and let's have a look. Foregone, but not forgotten. Oh, very good. That's the name of the podcast. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. You just said it there, <laughs> Foregone. Yes, brilliant. Um, good. Let's have a look. What else have we been playing briefly? Uh, Richard, what have you been doing? i but also been playing a slight slightly different game called monster truck championship <laughs> um which Sorry. came out today and uh my reviews on the site now as well uh but i quite enjoyed this it was something that i 
when when it came up the code was available for it um i was instantly put off being a was it being monster trucks because the only other time i controlled a monster truck was on the original stuntman game and uh going back to what we said earlier my controller got thrown across the room <laughs> but, right. but with this one they, they, they've got a, a really in-depth tutorial at the start so by the time it came to me doing the career mode i knew exactly what i was doing which helped a lot um so in the career mode you've got options to do racing drag racing and then freestyle events where you need to do do tricks tricks in your monster truck like backflips and somersaults and uh, bicycles and all sorts um but yeah graphically it's not brilliant i think it's it looks a little bit like um motor storm from the last gen right uh but in terms of gameplay i had i had a really good time with it oh, good. the events were good uh, varied there was the good variation in, in some of the tracks um but yeah as, as a little racing game i was quite impressed is there a career mode yeah the full full career mode um three different leagues so there's 10 events in each league and you need to complete the main the big big uh end end of season event thing to move on to the next league uh and there's also online multiplayer wow did you ever go to the online was anyone on it I did try. Uh, there wasn't anyone online, but I am planning on going back online because um, there's a few achievements associated with it. Oh. How much did you give it? I give it a three and a half. Oh. Uh, but I was I was sort of in between three and a half and four stars. Wow! Uh, but it, I think is I think it's about thirty two pounds. For the standard edition, it might be thirty-five actually, and it's it's a little bit pricey. Um, Richard, how's that gonna compete at the moment <laughs> with everything else? With Tetris, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm being uh, the thing. I'm being I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. being a bit harsh on them, but it's coming up to crazy time. And are you thinking? Do I get Monster Truck Championship? For thirty or quid, or do I save, wait to and get Watchdogs for an extra ten quid it's, on top? It's a tough one, isn't it? I, I think it's hard, isn't it? I'm just saying that that yeah, whole yeah. price range is it, that thirty-two price range is a really weird one. I think. Yeah. I'm hoping that there's a there's a subset of people, um, p- particularly in America, that that live mm. and breathe monster trucks and be yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I'm not yeah, bothered about it. traveling to a uh a london or valhalla i'm just monster trucks live and breathe monster yeah. trucks yeah live and monster trucks yeah that's all they need <laughs> good <laughs> good um now james what was your, what have you else you've been playing i've never played a lot this week um but just under a week ago mm. i finished reviewing neptimon extinction um so it's not really fresh in my mind, but it's basically a Pokemon type game. Um, so you can catch creatures, you can battle other trainers, and explore a wonderful world. And um, it's absolutely stunning. For and it's like um, Stardew Valley. Have you seen the visuals for that? Yeah, very similar to that. Okay, but even more crisp and beautiful. Is it like? Um, is it top down like that? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's 381 different Nexamon things to collect, um, and they've added some new ideas that make it different from Pokemon. There's a good story going on as well, um. And it's only 16 quid. Oh, that's good. And given you've got a good 50 hours, probably a gameplay. Wow. a steal. Wow. And I, I love the game. What, and what, you can read the review if you want. Yeah. Or don't. I don't mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> or do read I gave it a four and a half. Four and a half. Oh, nice. So please read it for more information. <laughs> so I'm pretty good at putting stuff in words. Because... Four and a half, okay. Pokemon, the alternative Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, Nexamon Extinction. 
the next Simon extension. Okay, good. Um, I'm not going to talk about what I've, because uh, I don't think we've got time really before we cover the rest of it. Now, every week we say we're going to do a feature, we keep pushing it back because we always run out of time by talking about something else. Um, <laughs> and, and this is the same this week. <laughs> It's, we were, we're going to do a great feature that we will do one day before the end of the year. So we'll save, save it. Um, but what are we doing? What are we looking forward to next week, gentlemen? Um, let's start with Richard. What are you looking forward to? Uh, two things. So firstly, starting again tonight on Channel 4 is a brand new series of Taskmaster. Have we talked about this before? I probably have. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't get enough of it. Um, but it's got it's moved from Dave to Channel Four now. Oh, big time! And um, mm, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. I think it's the perfect program that people that stuck in Tier Two need to watch. <laughs> what is it again? Tell us, just give it a brief outline of it. It's uh, five comedians doing silly tasks that have been given to them by Greg Davis and Alex Horn. And then they'll get rewarded points based on how well or they do or don't do the tasks okay. by Greg Davis. But it is, it's just, it, it's very funny. Um, and it's showing comedians in a different light. They're not necessarily trying to be funny, but the ones that work are, the, are just naturally funny with, with some of the things they do. There's no script or anything like that. But it, it still works as a, as a very good comedy show it's like a panel show but it's not at the same time it's just very very entertaining brilliant okay lovely richard good um james what about you nothing to look forward to (laughs) now i've seen my uh black paint documentary i've got nothing else oh that's your thing isn't it did you enjoy that was it good watch it again yeah watch it again okay um i'd definitely say watch it if you Slightly interested. If you're not interested at all, mm-hmm. do you should you watch it? Um, yeah, I think it'd be interesting. Okay, would oh, it get you see. interested in Blackpink? It probably get you interested within probably the first ten minutes. Well, you're like, wow, these are cool. Okay, awesome. <laughs> good. Good. Uh, I can't imagine me and Richard using those words. Maybe Richard. Yeah, not me. Yeah, probably different. You're the wrong hero. I, I am. Think. I'd say things like wicked, yes. or <laughs> something else I can't <laughs> think of. Um, um, the, the thing I'm looking forward to is coming out tomorrow, or oh, that's Friday. The what 16th. is it? It's I can't say it. How do I say it? <laughs> Raji, Raji, an ancient epic. Um, the reason is I'm looking right? for. I don't know what it's about. I don't think... You know one of those games you look at and you go, I really want this, to play this? It, yeah. it just appeals to me by the images, the text. It looks a bit like Journey. It looks a bit like uh, uh, Inside. It looks a bit like everything. I just really fancy it. It looks stunning. So I'm going to play that at some point this weekend. Um, and enjoy it. Um, no, no, it's like, yes. I will do, yeah. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Now, where can we find you, Richard, if we need to? On Twitter at Dobbo1912. Lovely. And James, where can we find you? I am on Twitter and Instagram at OKGKO. Fantastic. And you can find me on Twitter on GB Briley and Twitch at GB Briley. <laughs> um, thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, Richard, enjoy your holiday. Where are you going? Uh, a place in the Dales called Leyburn. Oh, nice. But more importantly, three, four days away from home and my office, home office, so. Oh, I did. So not your, I thought, oh, God, what's happened? Are you going on your own? <laughs> I was worried. No, no. <laughs> We're both going together. You and your partner, lovely. Good. We are. We're both Good. going. Brilliant. Lovely. So enjoy that, and um, we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. <laughs>